Today, we're going to talk about why it's so hard to start a successful business. There are many, many components to this whole dilemma, and a lot of it has to do with people who are smart. I've been doing a lot of research lately, talking to people, setting certain things up, and I've noticed that there are many, many smart people who are just broke. And I, and I looked at this thing, and I was on a quorum, and I saw this lady, and she had put this thing. And it's like I have a high Q of 159. I believe that's genius level. That's a very high IQ. But she said these words, I'm poor. And I started to think about that. And I was like, I don't consider myself a genius, but I'm not poor. And I started to really, really think about this, and I, all of these dots and things started connected because there's this person who's on Facebook who has a business, and they talk about all the money they make, and they were offering to train people, and people poke fun at this person because every time they ask a question, they'll hit him back with, like, I'll tell you for 5000 right? And this person has put out at times that, that they were – broke or that their business wasn't really doing as well as one would assume for the level of hubris. And I started to think about it. There's a lot of smart people out there who are failing. And then it made me examine why they're failing. And then that led me to go to, are they really smart? See, that's a whole bunch of analysis that I went through it was just blowing my mind on the number of people who, from our standards, are what you know one would consider smart. You know, our standards, uh, what we believe to be smart, what we believe to be the epitome of high intelligence. And I started to think, think about that and I started to push back on those definitions. A lot of this stuff is at your fault. I know everyone loves to hear that, but. In this case, it's really true because I've been thinking about this. And you know, as someone who has a media company and as someone who trains and teaches people, one of the questions is I have is, why does this student perform much better than this other student? That was a lot of answers there because your educational curriculum in high school or elementary school or any of these things is geared to the slowest performer. So when you're in a you're in your first grade class, that curriculum was designed for the slowest performers. It that's why the smart kids got really bored, but also the smart kids got dumb. I'll explain that in a minute. So you're you're going through this whole process that is teaching you not to excel. It's teaching you not to be the brightest performer. Shame is taught. Um, failure is taught to be a bad thing. Everything that's an antithesis of starting a business, right? So you, you have all of this stuff going on. The smart kids get dumb because your environment is a heavy, heavy component to your level of success. It's a huge, huge thing. The lady on Quorum, because, you know, people put their real names on Quorum. That's why it's a good place and people tend to even when they have conflict, they don't, t they tend to be more respectful. So I was able to find her. Um, big IQ, where well, she's poor. And this kind of goes back to depository smarts because we label, I don't know the criteria that is needed to make certain, I've never taken an IQ, I, IQ test. I really don't care. I've learned in many aspects of my life that results are the greatest thing ever. I don't care who you are, where you are, if you can get results. You know, I look her up and I see, you know, she's got like a little house in Iowa. She's really, really, quote, depository smart. She can, you know, probably a wonderful person to talk to, probably great liberal arts degree and all this other stuff, but she's poor. And I really, really like started to look at all this other stuff and it hit me. You have many people who, going once again back to, School was designed for the slowest performer. So you're not really being pushed unless you get into a different school, a private school, where they're just like, uh, we don't play that. Well, everybody in the school is the top performer. You just don't get challenged. And it also goes back to environments. 
Uh, I posted on my Facebook page that 70% of the people who are born poor remain poor until they die. 70% of people in the United States of America, the country with the greatest level of opportunities and access in the world. Why is that? I have transcended. I had to actually have a real honest conversation with myself because many people, when they tell you their hero story and all this other stuff, <clears throat> they tell you the good parts. And in my life, my grandmother, who actually had a degree, yeah, way back when, had a degree, who was pretty much my stay-at-home parent until she passed on, and I was 11. I had a, you know, an educated person, when degrees really mattered, teach me how to read before I went to school. So even though we defaulted into damn near abject poverty after that point, I really didn't grow up originally poor. There were certain circumstances where things went south, but I grew up being groomed and educated by someone who was educated, who was dedicated to my well-being, who looked after me, and I spent a lot of time. I remember, and this is a jacked up story. My grandmother unfortunately used to smoke, which I think is one of the reasons that she left early, but I was sorry I was smoking. She smoked these Bel Air cigarettes, white box, blue, I was like, Grandma, I won't be like you. I want to smoke. So she lit one up, right? Gave it to me. I took a drag. <laughs> I'm rolling around in the yard, coughing, wheezing, tears coming out of my eyes, right? I've never smoked anything since. So she was a good teacher because uh, maybe she didn't want me to learn how to smoke. So she like gave it to me raw. I didn't have that kind of upbringing. And I was just uh, wondering if those things have made the difference because I do have siblings who not even close and they have more formal education than I do, but I don't think that they got, I think your most important education is from when you're an infant to about 10. I think that shapes so much, which would explain the 70% because in that 70% and I'm going to give you some classifications of, why it's so hard for so many people to start this business is they were never allowed to fail as a kid or they got too much harsh um, upbringing. You know, as, a, as an infant to around 10, you should get a lot of encouragement. You should get a lot, you can do that, you can do that. You should have a lot of support because that's gonna set or cast a die for your future. When you get these dysfunctional households and you get these dysfunctional environments, uh, you know, I've got a client right now who pretty much if her family life was different, she probably would be a billionaire. I'm not joking. I'm just not joking. You know, she's a millionaire, but it's those critical elements. Irvin Thomas, so is homeschool better than? Debatable. Because once again, who's doing the home skill schooling? What's the environment? If you have a poor person with a poverty mindset, with a lot of dysfunction teaching you at home, your legacy is going to be more poverty. <laughs> so it really depends. Max, no, I didn't have a silver spoon. I had a intellectual spoon. I would say that my grandma was really smart. I mean, really, really smart for real. Um, King Flip, I had definitely have to say my family life is the only lyrics things that ever slows me down on my journey. I can work 48, 48 hours straight, but if there's trouble at home, I get derailed. That home environment is just very, very important. And many people just don't want to admit that. Just my cash. My great uncle pulled me. I'll let you try my SIG. Oh, man, it was horrible. It was terrible. Uh, Moonlighter School is designed to make us good factory workers. Yep. All right. So you have these environments, right, where you are out there thinking that you, you have some social expectations, too. This tribalism, this is another reason people remain poor, and this is why it's so hard for them to start a business. If you want more out of life, people will actually say you're greedy. You should be happy just to do what you're doing. You should be happy. You should be happy. I'm a, just um, from someone I dated who grew up in a poverty mindset, someone of a ghetto mindset, I should be happy. And she, she, she often tried to have me stop working so hard. You work too hard. You need to take breaks. You need to go outside. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck is your problem? I'm good. You the one that come home from your job exhausted where you pass out for two hours. What are you talking about? And then 
I didn't understand at the time, like I understand now that environment and tribalism, because she was trying to pull me around to her way of thinking so she can understand me because I was this huge enigma. Dude, I don't really work that much, drive a BMW, always have money, always happy. She couldn't really, um, she couldn't fathom that for some reason. It became very interesting. Part of that tribalism is rooted in, and this is something you're hearing. All right, I'm not trying to uh, step on anybody's parade here. You'll hear this, that family is the most important thing, okay? Everyone has family. Bill Gates is got family. Do you think if Bill Gates was running home for every family emergency, and mind it, he's still married, that he would have led Microsoft to what it is today? You know, Steve Jobs was a known asshole in that regard. To parse this correctly, you can become a world leader without family, but you can't become successful if you have a jacked up family that pulls your time. And so that's very, very controversial. That's very controversial because you have, and that's part of the tribalism, because for poor people, that's all you do have is family. That's it. That's it. You don't have any money. So your wealth is in your family. And you're taught that you should put them before you put money making or wealth building activities. But here's the rub. What is one of the main reasons that families implode? Lack of money. <laughs> but you're taught that money is bad. That's the craziest thing. So many people are taught that money is bad. So navigating this, and this, this is another reason that is so, I'll go back because I don't know where it stopped. And I'm talking about, I had a friend whose parents were both entrepreneurs and he went to them a long time ago and said, I didn't want to go to school. They were cool because they were both entrepreneurs and they understood how money really, really worked. Now let's get into the educational thing and the family thing and this stuff, because Typically, what happens is it starts with what you're taught, which is important. And also the other day I put on my Facebook page about why there's a lot of people who are not going to go on a date in 2017, like 80% of the signals are not going to go on a date. And this is something I saw a long time ago that I would meet people. And this was years and years ago. And they're talking about, yeah, this was, you know, I hadn't been on a date in a year or two. Um, we don't value those type of relationships anymore because many people have figured out that they can be okay without those things. Plus having a relationship is give and take. There's a compromise and a lot of people don't want to compromise and we live in a world you can really, you know, I, I think it's um, short sighted because typically if you don't build the, the family network, if you don't build that thing, you're going to get old. It's, it's very messed up to say, but we don't value older people in our society. We just don't. So you go ahead and you live your life and you don't build for the future in terms of family legacy, building the other family. It'll, you'll be an old person by yourself. I see that that's going to be a huge business model. Uh, there's going to be a lot of services for those people because that's where we're heading. But typically for many people starting the business, and why so many people fail is, and this is why personal development is such a strong and important part of people becoming successful with their business, is you were born to fail. You were born into a system that does not help you understand true business success. You know, it's a, it's a, a crazy, crazy thing. If you never understand that, and you, you go out and you work and you work and you work or you'll buy this course and you'll work and it just doesn't work out. You just didn't get many of the tools that you need to become successful with a business. There's a lot of stuff you just didn't get and it gets to be very interesting. Now let's talk about how to overcome that stuff. First thing is, if you're going to become an entrepreneur and you have no entrepreneurs in your family, stop talking to them about your business. Don't bring it up. Uh, you will also find you're going to become you and your friends and families. You're not going to have 
a lot of things on the professional level to talk about. You can talk about sports, you can talk about family, you can go out and have a good time, you can take vacations together, but keep the business and the money conversations out of your family life because they're not going to understand you. Um, you'll be talking about buying a building, they'll be talking about getting a job promotion, and you can sit back and go, great, man, congratulations. And realize that if you pull out that, hey, I just did you know a million dollar deal and they just put out, I just got a promotion and they're not equal, all of a sudden you become elitist or, or you're bragging. Even though you're just describing your walk of life in the same manner that they are, but because what you did seems to be more significant, unless your peers are doing similar things, you're gonna have issues as well. I'm just talking about that. Uh, Rules for Rebels, very good point. My girlfriend yells at me for spending money to make money, but she doesn't have any country how <laughs> business works. Oh man, that makes me think of someone I used to date who who is like, you got to kind of keep them, you got to keep them out of it because then here's something else going to rules for rebels thing. When you start explaining stuff and how much money you spend, and if you're in a romantic relationship with somebody, your security is their security. And when they see quote risk, they get scared. Um, they start to try to help you manage the risk. They try to help you reduce the risk. They start coming up with all of these solutions that are steeped in fear and uncertainty so they can get back to being comfortable. So that's one of the things I learned a long, long time ago was I kept anyone I was dating, seriously, I wouldn't even hire them part-time. I just kept them out of my business. Wouldn't hire them, wouldn't have them do anything. Um, most of the people that I've dated have no clue to the intricate aspects of business that I just kept them out of it. It's just like, hey, you're my romantic partner. That's it, you don't need this other stuff. And I, I recommend that for people who are dating someone who, if you and your girl both start the business at the same time, that can usually work out. But if you have the business before she comes on and he comes on, and then you're trying to talk to him, usually it doesn't work out well. It just doesn't work well. What is BTDT? <laughs> I don't know, is that R2D2? Uh, Mr. Stack, same deal with my GF who got me for a customer return and she sells shit on the internet. Um, Purpose Pit went to a business with a family member. I kind of regret it. They are our entrepreneur who likes to plan, makes lists, and talk about businesses who won't go out and get leads and we live together. Unfortunately, family and some friends are far from supportive. This kind of goes back, Monica, into the tribalism. This thing that you're taught in schools and the tribalisms with parents and things, it wasn't an environment designed to make you successful as a business owner. That's why so many smart people fail because when you start a business, you think you're just walking into the business, right? And you're just starting, no, 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 no. Your mom is walking into the business with you mentally, your dad, your friends, your family, society, your religion. This is why Muslims, Jewish people, and some other groups of folks who have religions that preach hard work and success, not prosperity, but um, there's a reason that a lot of Jews have money. The religion, if they're going to be orthodox about it, there's a lot of work in being a Jew. So they have a lot of good habits that go into being a good person in their religion that work very well in building businesses. <clears throat> it's really, you know, it's just amazing. Mike Page, the system is not designed to produce business owners. There's a system that's already a place for you to learn that criteria, that their criteria, produce workers. D. Wilson, my sister owns a business and a couple of homes. So you, do you consider it's good to talk to her about business and money? My other family members are working low wage jobs or not working at all. Um, it kind of depends because I don't know your sister, but I'm gonna throw something out there. I, I may be 100% wrong. It sounds like your sister is, quote, the most successful financial person in the family. And with that comes a certain level of pride, expectation. So she may be cool to talk to. She may not want to help you. I just don't know. Nay, so don't fuck on a job. <laughs> Only that some family members will attack you for being successful because they're not. They've been there, done that. The baggage of environment and dogma. Yeah, the, the tribalism is really, really big. So this is why you have people who are, quote, smart, right, who are poor. Now, let me get back to the other core because I kind of get off track a little bit. If you are smart 
based upon system requirements, then you can't make it out here in the real world. You're really not as smart as you think you are. Like going back to the IQ thing. Okay, the IQ is the standardized test and you'll see many people like uh, take idiot savants. And idiot savant is a person who may be autistic or have some other type of social disability, but they may be really good at math or something. They just have this special where it's like genius level in that aspect. So if you are good enough to become a genius or join Mensa because you could take a test and you can pass that test, but when you come out here in the real world and you can't perform, you're not really that smart. Now let's go back to Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, even Zuckerberg. All of these guys are really, really academically smart, but they're also incredibly clever. They're smart, there's genius, clever. Now, who do we call clever? People who can get results. The clever fox, the clever dog. These are folks who have been able to problem solve on the spot and make a change or get results. So from a social standpoint, it sounds good to be smart or to be a genius, but the reality is you want to be clever. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you some examples. And now this is some one of my friends. We talk about this quite a bit during my my retirement. We'll call it my retirement. Oh, the early days of the storage auction craze. I really didn't work that much. I really didn't. I mean, I wake up and I have two, three grand in my merchant account. This went on for a few years. So I got kind of, like I said, I got kind of a little bored. So I started playing around with stuff and I started running experiments. And one of them was the the Craigslist marketing thing, which I had used to sell physical products. I took that and I played around with it for three months, three months of not getting the results that I wanted, but I was able to figure out messaging. It, it was really like I taught myself copy writing because that's what it was. Copywriting is writing this uh, design to produce a desired result. You know, if you just write some copy and it doesn't produce any results, it's bad copy. If you write copy and it produces the desired result, it's good copy. So I hit upon a methodology and a sequence. It's very, the sequence is very, very important that I was getting all kinds of gains. I was getting gains out the ass, right? A lot of gains. And that came because of being clever, not so much smart. Um, being clever and clever is about action when someone's called clever there's usually an action component to it uh james scott guitar the strength that comes from being surrounded by successful people too yeah because see um i'll give you an example i was at this i was having lunch at this restaurant it's pretty expensive and i'm not just saying like oh i go to expensive restaurants but typically people who don't mind spending a lot of money for food go to restaurants like this and i was just sitting there talking to this guy and I was just saying what I was doing, just talking. And then this guy is a builder. So the next thing you know, he hands me his card and we're talking this stuff. And not once did I get that elitist thing or you think you're built, you feel better. And whenever I'm in the company of other people who have accomplished certain things they want in their life and I just start talking, it's usually, wow, that's really good. And we start sharing stories. But when I get around somebody who isn't successful the way that they want to be, uh, you're bragging, you're being elitist, uh, you're trying to talk bad about these people. You think you're better than other folks. And I've just learned that when you're around certain people, and if you've got people who have done really well in their lives, in your family, go up to them and say, look, I want to ask you a question. No judgment or anything. But do you find it a struggle that when you talk about your accomplishments that people hate you and you'll watch your eyes light up? Because this is common. Why? Most of the people in this country are poor. 70% of the people who are born poor will stay poor until they die. Uh, the numbers, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. 70 some percent of the people in this country don't make 50 Gs a year, which is not a lot of money. Now, if you were in a small town like Kokomo, Indiana, that might get you flowing, maybe, I don't know. But if you look at the system, it is set up in so many different ways for you to not win. Uh, Monica, how do we change the mindset of our children? We try to be an example for them now. What else can we do? That's it. 
be an example. And also, this is something else with kids. Your kids are going to be a product of you, but they're also going to be a product of their friends who they hang around with. Their friends are going to be heavy, heavy influences on them, whether you like them or not. So this kind of goes back to the fake ass middle class. What I talked about in that video was creating an environment like, OK, I live Chastain Park, right? And I noticed the kids around here are very different. Uh, they all have cars. And, you know, so I don't know some of the things some of the parents like make their kids do certain things so they can get their cell phone. But they're in a, an environment where their kids are very, uh, all, they'll meet a kid in the neighborhood and the kids are very similar. And then there's some cute groups of people, there's some kids around here, the parents are ultra rich, they're uber rich. Then you got those groups, and that's a whole nother class right there. But most of them, their parents do really well. They're going to have different conversations. So, Environment, hands down, is the biggest predictor of success. And I know if someone's going to throw, um, damn, what was that movie with Will Smith? And uh, I forget. Someone's going to throw that out. Can someone go from abject poverty and become uber rich? Yes, it happens. Is that the norm? Fuck no. It's called atypical. And what many people like to do is use in a typical example and contrast it as if it's a norm when it's not. Someone going from, you know, brutal poverty to just middle class is a very long journey. And here's the thing. There's so many ways that they can get there and pop back out. It doesn't take much. Uh, D. Wilson, she's very successful. They hate her. She doesn't deal with them. Thanks for answering my question. I'm like, I just, I, I'm telling you. Here's another thing, too. If you are, quote, the most successful one in the family, there is a unspoken expectation, in some cases it's spoken, that you should use your money to help everybody in the family. And if you do not, you are selfish you don't understand family and there's something wrong with you so there you've got that too that's another reason folks with money don't say shit Roosevelt, it seems like many successful people struggle in school or employment because they aren't doing things their own way yeah that happens uh let's see mike whoa, whoa, whoa. wait a minute Let's see. Can you explain tribalism? Really don't understand the context in which you use the word. Okay, here's tribalism. Tribalism 101. Years ago, Ellis Island, Irish people came across the uh, water, and when they settled in the Northeast, they can only do certain jobs. That's why you have a lot of Irish people who are firefighters or policemen. You'll see mechanically, there's a reason. They can only do those jobs. Then when they started to do those jobs and they started to do climb the ranks of success, they started to actually be successful. The thing that they can only do became the thing that they wanted to do and they were held in high esteem. So the tribalism is, you know, your name's McConnell. Your father was a grandfather. Your, your grandfather was a fireman. Your father was a fireman. You're going to be a fireman. That's what we do. That's tribalism. It becomes that even though you are able to do other things, uh, tribalism dictates that this is what you should do. And let's go on to even a, another thing. It's like well, a lot of Jewish, like well, a lot of Jewish kids or Asian kids, you're going to be a doctor. That's tribalism. <laughs> it's like what you should be, not what you could be, but what you should be. Yeah, we're we're going to talk about starting businesses, not flipping cars. Uh, rules for rebels. I struggle with copywriting. Do you have a course? Or any books you recommend? I recommend that this is this is what helped me. Find something that you really, really like and start creating copy for that because this is where a lot of people, in my estimation, go wrong. They'll go out and they'll start trying to do writing copy for shit they don't care about. Some people have the ability to do that. Many people don't. What helped me was I was very much interested in a topic. I wrote every day and I got results. So find something that you like. Then once you get those skill sets, then transfer them to your business. 
It's just what I did. I don't have any books because um, I said in a group and it got me in a lot of trouble that, you know, because, you know, people were talking about copywriting and stuff. And I said, well, my writing has gotten me pussy, money and fame. What has your writing gotten you? And that's true. Uh, my first example was I wrote this poem years and years ago. This girl from D.C. got on a plane and came down here to bless me with some because of that poem. That was that's my first successful copyright cover. So, you know, that's one of the things. All kinds of gains. I'm telling you. Paul Stevens, Zuckerberg, Jobs, Cakes all took their people's successful working functional ideas and ran with them. Yeah, Zuckerberg stole an idea for Facebook. I mean, that's that's documented. That's documented. But see, that still doesn't take. Well, that that kind of goes back to the clever thing. You could be really smart. You could be a person who can look at a chalkboard full of mathematical equations, right? You could be, quote, the brain, the, the scientist, the researcher. You could get that Nobel Peace Prize, right? Then here's this other guy who's named Hammy, who doesn't, he, he understands enough of it, but he's like, well, if we take those mathematical equations and we create this product, then he builds this, this conglomerate then you've got the scientist who really created it, but the scientist wasn't clever. The scientist was smart. Clever people take action. Smart people bask in their own intelligence. Uh, focus and adaptability are smarts. Far said it best. Stupid is as stupid does. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he stole the ideal. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I've said that on Facebook many times. Jobs got the original Apple computer from Xerox. Bill Gates got the software for free for some people who didn't want to use it. Yep. It's called Buckhead. Uh, James got to get to our education systems teachers working for others, facilitating, not creating value. Yes. Now, here's another thing that happens you'll see someone who will be, who's a kid, right? Who grows up in a very good environment. Because this is one of the things that I started to do. When someone shows me someone that's been successful, I will look at them and then I will start doing research in how did they grow up? Like the other day I mentioned this girl who was creating these iPhone cases, right? Well, both her parents are doctors. I mean, you, you keep seeing this over and over and over and over again. The environments are just so important. Yeah, pursuit to happiness. I know someone's going to put that in there. Let's see. Guilt. Too many people fear of failure. Uh, D. Wilson, that's exactly what they said. I'm telling you, man, is... Most of the people in this country have been trained a certain way. So there are more of them than there are people who start businesses, uh, people who take charge of their life. That's why it's so easy for you to become an Internet guru, because so many people will not take action. Mr. Stacks, that's the thing with broke Americans. Hate on the immigrants way of life and someone is successful. They want to they want them to mail home money. And Juverin, why does the world work on use get used system? I just want to be kind to people in my life, but I keep getting screwed over. I'm smart and see they think that they don't get what when, when they fool me. All right, and I'm going to give you this uh, this this thing that a lot of you know no one's probably ever told you. As evolved as we pretend to be, uh, we're still very much animals, and we live in a world of pimp or be pimped, meaning either you're going to create something and use people through employment or something, or you're going to be employed by other people and used to facilitate their dreams. There is no middle ground, not yet. Uh, maybe in the future, because, you know, we're just not going to have enough jobs for everybody. So there may be something like, you know, some government stipend. But right now, either you're going to be a builder or you're going to contribute in the dreams or the process or the system of the builder. That's it. That, that there is no middle ground. And for people who are who want to help other people, for folks who care deeply about other people, 
this is a hard thing to accept because you think I'm a nice person. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm not going to bother anybody. I'm not going to manipulate anybody. Yet you keep finding yourself on the short end of the stick because that's just how we are as humans. Uh, one, a good friend once told me, and this is actually in the 48 Laws of Power, never play to people's kindness. Play to their self-interest. And whenever you play to someone's self-interest, you're going to win. You know, people say it's manipulation, but that always works. Very few people are just going to do the right thing for the reason of doing the right thing. Moonlight, ten thousand hours to become experts. High IQ. These folks spend time getting book smarts. Doesn't translate into business smart. No. Mm -mm. No. 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 Shoe four five eight. Where can I see your literary excellence? <laughs> uh, heard Mark Cuban stole his online broadcasting idea. Let's be let's 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 go ahead with the word. Let's replace stole with action. Like okay, let's take what what happened when I started this YouTube channel. Anybody could have came on YouTube and started a channel about storage auctions. It was wide open. I was the only one that did it. And then after it became popular, other folks jumped in and I started hearing stuff. Cause I, if you notice, I didn't really network with any of the storage auction people. I didn't, cause I thought they were full of shit. And I often said that. And so that got me a lot of hate, but the reality is if you're clever, you know, I'm going to give you a few things. There is depository smarts where you can be a genius and pass an IQ test. Uh, there's clever. And then there is depository smarts that's clever. And then there's the motherfucker factor. And Shobbs has the motherfucker factor. Gates has the motherfucker factor. Prince had the motherfucker factor. When you can be smart and execute and execute at a high level, even though you know people are going to hate you, the things that you can accomplish are ridiculous. Let's see. Zuckerberg saw the chair to stand on versus sit in. I'm at Stanley. Thanks, outstanding topic. Uh, Leroy gesturing. School gave me paralysis analysis. It took me. It took me two failed side hustles that got me out of that mindset. Hands <laughs> pimp or get pimp. I mean, for someone who's all right, we're going to take some. You know, so most of the guys that were, people that watch this channel are men. Nice guys finish last. How many times have you seen a guy who is a deplorable asshole get the chick you wanted? And she knows he's an asshole. How many times have you seen that? I mean, it's just a reality. Uh, purpose fits. How do you build an exclusive brand, a brand where you turn away wrong customers like luxury brands? Price, price separates a lot of people very quickly. Uh... James Scott's giving Ann some things. What's up, Patches? Yeah, play to the self-interest. I mean, you know, just doing the right thing for the right thing. Mm -mm. And dude, I feel like a terrorist when I use intimidation, but I guess getting a feel for it would help. Uh, that's true. Hate is an easier emotion to rise to understanding. I mean, this, this is the whole thing because you know, this is, I've been creating courses and stuff since 2010, and I analyze why some people are not successful. I analyze why certain courses don't do well. And th there's a thing of messaging because here's a little secret, and I'm not supposed to say this being the internet marketer, but when you create an online course or you create an online book, 75% of the people who purchase this, regardless of the price, will not complete the work. And only, I mean, seriously, it's a high number who will not crack open that book, who will not start the course. It is a very high number. And part of that is fear, failure, um, what comes next. There's so many things that go into it. So when you begin to understand how people operate and you, you're putting together courses and put, you know, trying to be a leader, 
because you know a lot of people hate Ty Lopez, right? Ty Lopez has figured out the psychology of his group like nobody else on the planet. And you know, many people are like he's a scammer, he's this, he's this. Uh, he spent like twenty million. You know, wherever some someone says that, like, yeah, he spent twenty million dollars on ads. Here's the thing about spending twenty million dollars on ads: if those ads don't convert, you can't keep spending. So they clearly converted. And that's just something that many people don't want to give the dude credit where credit is due because they don't like his business model because they feel that it's quote predatory. And this is what's funny. I've seen many people uh, question it and I've seen his students go in and say, well, I took the course and I got results. And then I've seen these people beat them up because they're like, no, 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 no. You're stupid. This isn't supposed to work. You're being taken advantage of. And the guy's like, no, no, I paid to the, took the 67 steps and I like it. And it really, no, 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 no. You're stupid. Because hate, as Diana put, is a much easier emotion. <laughs> Price separates the weak from the obsolete. I like that. I regular, I can't pinpoint who invented the gyro technology, the drone, two wheeler, rather, what type of thing and is the future. I mean, typically, this is the thing. The guy who invents that stuff isn't the one that makes the millions or the billions. It's the clever guy in the equation. Uh, James, crazy statistic. I have only two guitar courses that I launched over two months ago, and the people taking it have only completed 5% of the course so far. <laughs> yep. It's it's uh, a lot of people just will not do it. I don't care. What, I don't, it's just I, I'll tell you a story. I had a girl who spent six thousand dollars with me to do some training for video marketing. We did about twenty percent. She dipped. I don't want to refund. I just I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm telling you this is and see this is another thing. This is a really really good point. Many people think when they start a business that so many things are going to happen. Well, once you get into it, you will learn stuff. Because, see, this is one of the reasons that I'm the asshole in the Facebook group, because I know a lot of people are talking bullshit because they're not saying things that they've experienced. They were saying things that they hope to experience. When you experience these things, you'll find out like, well, wow, that's not really as bad as I thought. Uh, Josh, really, he knows how to draw people in. That's a fact. I mean, it is. <laughs> Do you know your life's purpose? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Just stop it. Oh, let's see. Thank you for this fantastic live stream series. No problem. Stop talking about me. I will start that course when I grow up here. And they spent good money on the courses. Yeah, I mean, it, it, regardless. It's not even time management. People are not self-starters. This goes into the tribalism. This is, goes into why smart people aren't successful. They, there are, this is what I've learned. First thing is you have to have what I call working intelligence. You don't have to be a genius. You just have to be smart enough to figure out that if you put the key in the lock and turn it, it'll open up the lock. Okay, that's operational intelligence. Then two, you have to be clever. You kind of have to be able to look at the situation. Like there's some people who are emotionally uh, emotional geniuses. These are your pimps. These are your natural salespeople. These folks have an intuitive understanding of human psychology. They don't know why they're good at it. They're just good at it because it's it's like some people are born smarter than other people. Some people are born taller than other folks. Some people are born with genes where they can eat pizza every day and never get fat. Everybody gets different stuff. But people who are really smart emotionally can literally run, rule the world. And that's just something that's not taught. So you get these people who go in and take these courses and they may be depository smart, but they're not clever. Or they may be clever, but they're not depository smart. There, there's so much that goes on into this. Let's see. I know many people who fail at business. Most try to keep it up with the Joneses to start a business at the same time. That typically never works. Uh, your best deal is to, you know, go broke, you know, um, essentially cut all your living expenses, live as lean as possible, and then build your business and build the asset. 
Uh, Paul C., what's the most successful literary genre on Amazon? Romance. It is now, it was last year, it'll be next year, it'll be in the future. Most books that are put out are, are read by women. So any book genre that dedicate that caters to women or kids in high school who have a lot of time will do well. Here in my garage, stop it, man, stop it. Uh, Josh Barr, as a kid, I was selling candy to school security. Stopped me 15 letters from a reseller. And instead of encouraging them for sure, entrepreneurship, they suppressed it. D. Wilson work in intelligent, emotional intelligence. And it, it's really, really big. Uh, King Flip, he's back. People not being self stars That's why the self help success business is going to boom like the fish. This, it is. It's booming already. Uh, con men, yeah. I mean, Part of the thing, and you'll have some people who use their powers for good, but once again, and this is something that was really, really hard for me, and I've tested this over the years. I could put on an article on my Facebook page that is helpful, will, it's just good stuff, and not too many people will read it. Then I can put up an article titled, 18 Pimps Slap Six Holes. Oh, man, that's outrageous. Hate, angry face, all this stuff. People like that stuff, man. It's just, <laughs> it's rough. Purpose pit, advice for being taken seriously if you look younger than your, than your age. Be successful. Success changes everything. Uh, collapse, I've seen many less smart people who work their asses off are, ones, are the ones who get ahead, while smart ones keep take, thinking and taking no action. This is how you have someone with a PhD who's living with their parents. What's up, David? Uncle Sam enhances your emotional intelligence. Um, Paul Stevens, so true about chicks. I have not only seen absolute pigs get delightful, beautiful women, but I've seen those women stay with these louts and be destroyed. Hind brain. <laughs> yes, so the people sold Tootsie Rolls back in high school had 100 bucks a week. Uh, my fuckery channel is booming on on YouTube. Uh, one thing with that, those channels, they're going to probably have a big problem in the future. YouTube's changed some stuff. Shoe 458, I'm 23. I can't get over the tribalism mindset. Uh, for people who have tribalism issues, these are a few recommendations. Get the fuck out of your town. Move away. Force yourself to move somewhere and create new friends and open yourself up as a person. I left home at 18, did not go back. <laughs> One of the best things ever. Uh, Joshua, do you think YouTube is still? Yes. People love BS. They love it. So it, it gets into it. So this is one of the big things that happens with people. Because you, you'll think you'll go in there and you'll say to yourself, I am really smart. I should be able to do this. And then you'll go do it. And then there's something that's missing. No one told you that was missing. And then you get butt hurt or destroyed or just like, fuck it. I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> I see that. So here are the steps. You got to be, like I said, you got to have working intelligence. You got to be clever. You need to have some discipline. If you have those three things, you can make a lot of money. I'm not going to say you will be a billionaire, but yeah, you can hit millionaire status. You can hit that because the thing is, once you start to get this working intelligence and you realize because I'm in groups and you know I've said this before and I have people who will fight with me and when they're fighting with me because this one guy you know he you know if you build relationships and you create value you get people who will buy from you over and over and over again and anybody that knows anything about business is knows the cost of acquiring customers is real high so if you can acquire a customer and provide value and service and make money and money over a period of years, you it's just a crazy metric. I had people fight with me like, well, everyone doesn't want a relationship. And there was two people fighting. The other day I saw a post by one of the chicks and she's using the free plan. Why are you using the free plan? If you use the free plan, you can't use your own domain name. So when I see people using the free plan and talking about this stuff, they ain't making that much money. And I was just like, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it.
Uh, what's up, Tom Rosenberg? Right back at you. Uh, Purpose says, thanks, Glenn. My brand is getting more popular online, and the exes are noticing. Two contacted me this week to congratulate me. Haven't spoken with either <laughs> over a year. <laughs> oh, yeah, that happens, too. Uh, wild L2, L23. I would not say school is geared towards the slowest students or whatever you said. It was the truth. Everybody would get straight A's. Oh, really? I'll take your challenge. Boom. When teachers and school system create curriculum, they gear it toward the slowest student because, or the most common students, because if they didn't, most people would fail. That's how curriculums are designed. Curriculums are designed for general populations. They're not specific. That's why people with money have always put their kids in private school. I went to a private school. I went to a Catholic high school. It was totally different from um, my regular high school. Uh, they just, because here's a few things. If you were a problem kid, they would kick you out and keep your tuition. And the classes were smaller. The teachers cared more. So this, anyone, you know, and do this. Look up how educational curriculums are created. And ask yourself this. If what you say, if these things weren't geared for the slowest student, why is we as a country that spend more money per student have some of the worst students in the world? These are facts. Look them up. Look them up. Look them up. Code Labs, how to be more disciplined. Take it one day at a time. Find something that you need more discipline in and just set up that I'm going to spend 5, 15, 20 minutes a day doing this and just keep pushing. Because the thing is, you have to turn whatever you want to do into a habit. Like, when I started doing these live streams, I didn't want to do them. But YouTube being what it is, knowing how it works, you know, I had to change whatever was wrong with my channel and this did it. I started off doing them. I didn't have a time. You know, people were just saying, hey, you know, uh, put me on the email list. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing this. And once I got in the habit, now it's a habit. It's very easy because you notice it's done pretty much around the same time. It's a habit. That's how you get discipline. You turn it into a habit. You don't try to white knuckle it or brute force it. Turn it into a habit. Thanks, D. Uh, how about charter schools? Uh, it depends on who runs the charter schools. Uh, some charter schools are no better than a regular school. They just get more resources. Uh, James, 82, in regards to school and life, that book has been a game changer for me. Uh, code, the school system was designed to produce worker slaves. If you would look at the early formation of how schools were created, there's a reason that you change class. When you go to a Montessori school or something, you don't change class like that. Why do you change your class? That's shift work. Earl Nightingale points this out in the strangest secret never watched it on YouTube. Does romance include Roma, Roma, uh, erotica? Yep. Never broke Asher Pat. I went to private school from kindergarten to sixth grade, got to public school in the seventh grade, made straight A's, and student of the year. <laughs> it's different, man. Okay, wow. Well, I got to see what you said. I think you mean it's geared towards the average person, but I agree with you. Thanks for the tips, by the way. Did not realize this was live. Oh, yeah. This is live. Live right now. It'll be, it'll be recorded later. Um, the average person, and that's something else. You know the average person is created. Because if they weren't created, you couldn't be manipulated. But that's a whole nother street. Uh, Josh Hill tried the Christian private school once around six years old. Hey, they beat us with rulers. Yeah, they will touch you. King Flip, yeah, I thought it was smart to the private school. See, I love this confirmation because um, I went there. Now, I was a nerdy little kid. And I was in honors English, honors literature. So when I went you now in the honors classes, they were kind of designed like the private school. So it wasn't a shock, but it was still a shock because everybody in my class was fucking smart. I mean, not like, remember the Rubik's Cube? I, you know, when that shit came out, I was in school. We had people in there playing, you know, there was just two guys, right? They were playing who could solve it the fastest, not, not, who can solve it? Who can solve it the fastest? And every day they get faster. These are the games that they play. And another thing is with private school, typically 
you develop relationships with people who are already in positions to do things for you. That's another thing that I saw immediately. Uh, the U.S. education system was based on the Prussian system back in the 1800s, designed to produce adequate workers for the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, I mean, it was it was to make you a better worker. It wasn't to make you smart. It wasn't to make you wealthy. It wasn't to make you happy. It was to put you in a situation where you could be used. Can I become a doctor and a businessman at the same time while in school? Um, many doctors do that. Edwards, depends on the neighborhoods you live in. Some public schools and wealthy areas are like private schools. That's debatable. That's debatable because if you, you know, all private schools are not created equal, but to give you an example of um, Bill Gates went to a private school and one of the things he learned in school was transcendental meditation. Please show me some public schools who are investing in transcendental meditation which has scientifically been proven to lower your blood pressure, lower your stress rate, increase your memory, and so many things. That's what he learned in the 70s in high school, his private school. I don't see that happening in a public school anywhere. There's just too many damn politics. When parents are sinking 30K a year into their child's education, there will be a difference. Uh, let's see. King, we're putting our kid in Montessori school. Those two-year-olds don't move so focused on tasks. I thought they were mannequins. Um, it, it's just different because, see, the thing is how you're groomed. Um, another thing with public schools is your kids are exposed to kids who have bad habits. Um, if you, you know, you got kids and you go to a private school and as you're touring the facilities, you'll notice that they don't have the behavior problems that public schools do. If a kid's acting up, they will get rid of that kid. There is no, hey, we're going to work it out or we're, no, no, you're gone. That's in the rules and everything. Yeah, we're talking about uh, how to, why it's so hard to start a successful business. You know, a lot of you guys who are hitting me up with these other questions, I'm not. I'm ignoring you because you're trying to change the topic here because this is, as I can see, and a lot of people have a lot of input on this, this is pretty big. And for those of you who are interested in that type of stuff, be sure to go below and get the Never Broke Action Pack. What I'm going to do off of this course that I'm going to start in 2017, which you know ain't that really far away, I'm going to give you 450 bucks off that course. It will be very expensive, but it will be very fucking effective. If a student does not have the IQ, do you think money will make a difference? Like, uh, can I understand rocket science now? I'm going to say yeah. I'm going to say yeah, because see, here's the thing. How can I say this? You notice how kids who are not super attractive, but their parents have money, and it's just money helps with everything. You know, maybe you have a girl who, or a guy who's somewhat plain, but their parents go ahead and get their teeth fixed. And then they get the best skincare and they have the right hairstyle. And all of a sudden, they're like, wow, they're attractive. Uh, same thing with intelligence. If you have, you know what you call a guy who graduates medical school with a C average? Doctor. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, it helps. Because let's say you have someone who doesn't grasp. Uh, I'm not really big on the IQ thing. I'm big on function. So let's say you have this kid who immediately grasps concepts and you don't have to give him that much help. But say you have kid B who with the right training and with the right teaching can also grasp and execute and utilize those concepts, except it takes him a little longer extra training. That's the difference between money. There's a lot of people, we as Americans are just fascinated by innate ability. Someone who's just just smart and all the stuff, which is, oh, yeah. I am fascinated by people who work their asses off because through hard work, application, and diligence, you can literally change your life. You can change your income. You can change your love life. You can change anything if you will work for it. And a lot of people just don't want to work for it. Environments in school greatly matter. Uh, James Guitar, Foster Curiosity, and Investigation. These two things I see among schools, big game changers. Big time. Uh, meditation is the reason that I was able to do as much as I do.
Sassy Moxie, went to private school from second to 12th. The difference is you're taught critical thinking. You're asked why you think the way you're thinking. They don't have that. They don't have time for that in uh, regular school. Tribalism, did it by meditation and emotional intelligence by Daniel Goldman or Gold. Yep. Elon Musk taught himself rocket science. <laughs> oh, James Harmon. Everyone knows what the sex, the sex way is, that scooter where people just get on it and just kind of lean it goes this way. That guy didn't have a degree. He taught himself how to build that thing. His name is Harmon. Dean Harmon. Dean Carmen, I believe. I'll look it up in a second. Even in the wealthy area, government schools can't compete. The wealthy send kids to elite schools for an education and a connection to the kids to other wealthy people for future business connections. Okay, like where I live. There are there are several private schools, and the public school around here is pretty nice, but these kids around here, they don't go to that public school. They don't go to the high school. They Mm -mm. They all go to private school. There is International Harvest. There's not Pope. Um, damn. What the name? Hold on a second. Actually, let me get in here. Um, there's a bunch of them around here. I mean, a bunch. Let's see. What do we have? We got Primrose, Atlanta, Jewish Academy, Mount Vernon Presbyterian, there's several Jewish schools around here. There's a Jewish Academy, there's SAS. I mean, literally like five miles. Uh, Mount, there's a ton. I can't think of the other ones. There's another one on West Paces. Let's see. Let's look at the, they got a, a guide point. We have the Atlanta Country Day School, Atlanta Girls School, Atlanta International School, Atlanta Speech School. Blessed Trinity School, Brandon Hall, Cornerstone Christian Academy, College School. There's a all of these schools are within 10 square miles. Now the income is high between Dunwoody, Sandy Springs, North Buckhead. So I could see it. Holy Innocence, that's the one. Because uh, that's a big one. Love it. Marist. That's been around for a long time. Pace Academy, Padilla School. There's all kinds of stuff around here. It's ridiculous. Let's see. public schools. So if they graduate med school, even if they had the lowest average, they really are doctors. A C student was the president of the United States, man. <laughs> a man with one of the highest IQs in the country was stuck working as a janitor because he couldn't get along with people. Yep, Dean Carmen. My husband is spending $2,100 a month on our kids' elementary school education. Once again, I believe education from being an infant up to 10 or 12 is more critical than college education because you essentially learn how to learn. And once you learn how to learn, reading comprehension, all this other stuff, these are things that will carry you through the rest of your life. Wow, the L23, right? A C student in middle school is an A student in college. I know, right? Because <laughs> I've been in med school before, not done yet. Those kids will blow you away, man. Cali 1115, I disagree with private school being better than public school. I attended one of the best private schools in the country that did not teach me critical thinking. Well, I said earlier that all private schools were not created equal. And there are schools where they will essentially blow you away. So we could just disagree because I don't really know what your private school, because this is something else too. Who says they're the best private school in the country? Did they say it or did four, five, six, seven other third parties say it? 
Let's see. Private schools are more for connection than education. Put too much emphasis on money. Many wealthy people are dumb as doorknobs, but there are social connectors. Um, once again, environment. I did this to fake ass middle class. Let's take someone who's wealthy, who's who's dumb. Let's just say they're dumb. This person is going to start off in life where most people will never attain. Plus, there are some schools, though there's an international school. Essentially, there's this international curriculum where a kid can go to school here and go to a sister school in Japan and they're getting the same education. Those schools are not even close to what's going on in public school. They are light years ahead. I've seen those kids. Uh, Callie, did you go to a religious school with some kind of indoctrination? There's uh, this misconception that northeastern school systems are far superior than small school systems. What do you mean? I don't get it. In the south. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. Let's see. The schools in the South America tend to better than U.S. public schools put together. Could be because a lot of these kids learn three and four languages in school. Could be. Education is not an institutional advantage. Uh, David Borgero fought for it was so dumb. LB just said he couldn't chew gum and fart, but he was likable and just smart enough to be in position to be president. You don't have to be intelligent, just smart enough. Uh-huh, you attended a religious school. Uh, probably had a lot to do with it. There's some uh, private schools that have no religious connection or they kind of damping it. <laughs> Irvin's funny, heading to work about the clock in at the plantation. That's funny. But I mean, just kind of give you some guidelines and stuff why um, people are struggling to start businesses. I mean, the whole system in the game was just essentially rigged against you from jump. I mean, it's tribalism, shoe four, five, eight. That's one of the things. So this is why, you know, the tagline around here used to be where your real education begins. That came because of where my real education began. I think I grew as a human much more from 32 to 50 than I did from one to 32. I started exposing myself to a lot of stuff. I opened myself up to a lot of things. I started hanging out with a different group of people. I started talking about different concepts. And hands down, that was one of the reasons that I was able to move myself into the position of owning a business and also being successful because, you know, I've said it many times before, I had five businesses that completely failed. I'm the same guy. The only thing different is my knowledge base. I'm the same person. My IQ didn't go up. It's just, I learned what I didn't know and I was able to apply it. And it's really that simple because one of the things that, you know, we're going to do in this e-commerce course is talk about audience. You know, everyone talks about the product. It's not the product, it's the audience. And um, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to go down. <laughs> Tommy, you'll do like what you're doing, but not into talking about schools today. Uh, this is part of the reason that people aren't successful, their environments and their education. Let's see. We'll talk about that later because I'm going to shut this down. So just for those of you who are still here, be sure to get the Never Broke Action Pack. Now, why is that important? I fully expect the people who are going to take this e-commerce course to make a lot of money. So you need to manage your money. You need to fix your credit or make your credit even better and start getting yourself in a money mindset. So when you make big money, It'll fulfill you, it'll go further, and it'll create a legacy for your family. So everyone who gets the Never Broke Action Pack, you're going to get $450 off of the new e-commerce course that is coming. So with that, be sure to like, share this video with people you care about, and comment when the video renders. And with that, I'm out.